Mecklenburg Shorthorns against the Shiner Comanches, and they're just about set to kick it off. Well, the Schulenberg Shorthorns have uh, come out on the field now. The captains will go midfield for the flip of the coin. Steven Sarton, number 10, for the Schulenberg Shorthorns. Chad Gintert, number 61, and Barry Shepard, number 34. And as we mentioned in the pregame, uh, Jeff, uh, Shepard, or I should say Gintert, is in, uh, back in healthy status now. That's a welcome, welcome addition to have back to the lineup. He's the leader of that defense. We have two nicknames for him here. We call him the Head Hunter and the Bull. Two other ways. He's one heck of a player. If, if he could magically get about 20 or 30 more pounds on him, he'd be playing college football next year. Of course, Chad is 6'4", 195 pounds. He was a force last year as a junior, and he's having another terrific year again this year. He is. He's got a heck of a heart. If you meet him on the sidelines, he's the nicest guy you ever want to meet. But don't put him on that field. I wouldn't want to be across from him. We talked uh, earlier about, uh, we just alluded briefly to the Weimer game last week where Schulenberg uh, convincingly defeated Weimer. What were your overall thoughts on that game? Well, uh, we kind of came out a little bit flat. I, I think uh, kind of being an overwhelming favorite in the uh, game kind of didn't help us a little bit. Uh, we were looking to this game. I know we're really concentrating on getting to this game. And uh, Weimer came out ready to play. They, they, there would have been nothing better for them to, to, to beat us that, that last week. But uh, after about the first half a quarter, a quarter, we came back to our regular self and, and, and played the way they should. We could have played better. We could have played better and could have scored more points. But uh, Coach Hoosman showed a little class and knelt the ball down near the end and, and did a few things that really show the character he is. Of course, Weimer, the team we're talking about right now, will be playing Flatonia this evening on this Friday night as the horns come through the banner. And uh, that realignment from the district didn't seem to bother Flatonia in the preseason, but here in the district season, uh, they've had their hands full as East Bernard easily handled them. Well, they were, they were used to playing that uh, 1A schedule, and they got to bring a few of those along in their pregame schedule this year, uh, convincing them to play them, and it, and it hurt them. It hurt them legally. It really hurt them. And, and we were talking about schedules and so forth, we talked about the successes of Coach Hoosman and, and so forth. This year, every non-district game was against a 3A opponent, with the exception of the 4A team in Houston. Remarkable. Well, the, uh, that game was by far the toughest game we had, and, and uh, they were, I wouldn't want to play them again uh, the next week. Uh, by all rights, they had us beat on that game, but... Uh, if you've watched them in the paper lately, last week they beat a fine Scarborough team 35-7. to So they're a fine football team that we happen to be fortunate enough to win that week. I think that, that excellent competition we played is going to do nothing but help us in the long run. I didn't catch the flip of the coin. Did you happen to catch uh, how that came out? I'm sure I sure did not. Schulenberg is going to receive, I understand. Fine sponsors that helped make this broadcast possible. Diamond S Restaurant, Fox Fire Builders, J.O. Renner. 10th Frame Bowling, Autobrat, Autobahn Travel Shop, Emco, Ken and Sherry Banks, Chrome Shack Wagner Insurance Agency, Kelly and Doris Sarton, Schulenberg Livestock Auction Incorporated, Zimmerman's Garage, Vernon and Fawn Zimmerman Owners, Schulenberg Printing and Office Supplies and Support Specialties, the Prosky Family, Dan and Jill Tabor. Matt Beal will kick off for the Shiner Comanches back deep. Standing on the 10-yard line is the senior, Jason Houston. Kevin Marek is uh, standing at the 15, along with uh, David Raines. Here's a short kick on the right side, taken by Raines at the 20. He's to the 25, breaks it across the 25 to about the... Uh, uh, across the 30 to about the 34-yard line where Schulenberg will set up first and 10 well, from there. Well, Dan, you can see right there that the, the field conditions had a slip right there on the, on the opening play. Uh, that's going to be a big big factor in the game, I believe, tonight. If we can uh, stay away from the mistakes and, and play in the dry part of the field, we have a good chance, I believe. Schulenberg to go first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Steven Sarton, the senior quarterback, brings the team to the line of scrimmage. Houston uh, in the backfield. Split receivers. Jamie Jackson comes in motion to the left side. Sarton rolls out, looking to throw. Throws one incomplete, intended for Bezetsny on the sidelines. Well, there's room to run there. I think we're trying to open this offense up to uh, to uh, spread their defense out and, and hopefully uh, make them make a mistake where we can use that. He had room to run there looking for the pass. I assume that's going to lead to some better things later on. In the ball game now is Steven Adams, number 82. He brings the uh, play in from Coach Usman. We're looking at a second and 10 from the 34, just underway from Schulenberg. Number 22 comes wide to the left side. Bradley right. Sarton barks the signals. 
Hand off to Jason Houston over the right side. No running room whatsoever. Bottled up. No gain on the play. Shiner's quickness is going to be a formidable opponent tonight. That's, uh, we haven't faced a line this quick. Uh, they're going to have to be quick hitters, and, and hopefully we'll get some positive yards somehow in the middle. Bozetsny, Kurt Bozetsny checks into the game offensively with the co uh, play from Coach Hussman. Third down and 10 for the Horns from the 34-yard line. Marek is tight left. Slot on the right side and split wide receiver on the right side. Sarton barks the signals. Jamie Jackson comes in motion. Quick screen out to Jackson. He's got some blockers ahead. And it's brought down just shy of the 40-yard line, a pickup of about five. A good play, a good play, uh, about a, almost a six-yard gain. It's going to be a fourth down. I assume we're going to punt to uh, get them pinned deep. But uh, a little, just to see the field conditions, I think he was testing out to see what we were going to be able to do. Uh, it's going to be a little tentative the first few uh, series for both teams, I believe. We heard about the aggressiveness of the Shiner uh, defense. We certainly saw it on that first series. They, 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 they flood to the ball excellent. Excellent team speed. Maybe we can use that to advantage and play that over pursuit, possibly. Schulenberg to punt the ball. Here's the snap. Blocked. Shiner has blocked the punt. Reigns falls on the ball. Jared Schrommick attempted to punt the ball standing on his own 25-yard line, and it was blocked, I believe, by uh, Jason Cowan of the Shiner Comanches, and quickly Shiner has uh, got the momentum on their side. That's one thing we alluded to earlier. We need to cut down the mistakes and uh, keep the ball in there in the field. We need to make a big step up here and uh, defend our goal and do a fine job here. The slap seemed to be a little bit to his right, but uh, just seemed like uh, Cowan came in ever so quickly. Just enough to get the ball. Number seven will quarterback for the Shiner Comanches, Radney Ventura. Hand off to number two, Nothing doing. Lyndon Lee. He goes nowhere, loss on the play. A host of horns in there. That's going to be a big key for us, Dan, if we can keep that play from being a big gainer for him. Uh, that's one of their bread and butter plays. He's a fine running back, if not the finest, one of the best we've seen this year. And he's going to be a key to their game. The right side of the line of the horns kind of strung it out. Lee had nowhere to go to. And then uh, Chad Gentert and a host of horns came in to put the stops on him. Actually, uh, no gain at all. I thought it may have lost a little bit, but it's, uh, we'll call it second and 10 from the 35-yard line. Here's a pitch out to Lyndon Lee. Again, uh, no much running room. Finally brought down in a big way by Sam Brown. Excellent pursuit by the line there. We're going to have to turn that man in. We can't let him afford to let him get outside and, and utilize his speed. Nice play to string him out. Shrummick liked to have him in the backfield for a good loss. Uh, that's what speed does for you, though. Get you away from that one tackle and, and possibly makes a big play. A big play here for Schulenberg. Yes, it is. Big play for Schulenberg. Big play for Shiner. Third and nine from the 34-yard line. Clock runs. 9-11 to go. First quarter action. No score in the game. Shiner's got the first break of the night. They made it there on their own. They blocked a Schulenberg punt. Quarterback back to pass. Screens one out. Incomplete. A screen that never really developed. Well, uh, our line got in there excellent. Had a, a lot of pressure on him. Even if he would call it, he'd have to make a, a, an acrobatic run to get the first down. We had a few linebackers waiting in the wings a, a few yards back. But with his moves and his experience, that, anything was possible on that play if that pass was completed. Judging from the two first series we've seen, uh, Jeff, it's going to be a defensive night here. I, I think you're right. On fourth down, Shiner will punt the ball. Jason Cowan back to punt, number 25, standing on his 45-yard line, or the 45-yard line of Schulenberg, I should say. High punt taken by Jamie Jackson, goes to the right, not much running room, gets away from one man and is strung out of bounds right around the 15-yard line. Good coverage for Shiner. That speed is going to be something we haven't had to deal a lot with this year, and we're going to have to adjust to it. But uh, we got the ball back. That's the main thing. We made a good stand after a turnover. Uh, well, you could say a turnover, a, a break in Shiner's favor. We need to take care of business and play Schulenberg football now. Schulenberg will set up shop right about the 16-yard line, as best we can tell. 8.50 to go. I say as best we can tell. Kind of crowded up here in the press box this evening with uh, the coaches and so forth. But uh, we'll make do. No problem. Steven Sarton, the quarterback, barks the signals. First and 10. Fumble on the play. Sarton picks it up, runs with it. He's hit at about the 17. Uh, he may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but I don't think so. He lost about four or five yards on the play. Looks like yeah. lucky to get the ball back. It's, it's going to be an interesting situation with the conditions, the way they are on the field tonight. Boy, you're so right. He lost about six on the play. We'll call it second and 16 for Schulenberg. Didn't realize that the ball 
had squirted that far back before he could pick it up. Second and 16, Schulenberg from their own 11-yard line. Sarton barks the signals for Schulenberg. Handoff to Houston, around the right side, breaks a tackle, tries to get away, gets away from one, drags another with him to about the 17-yard line. He gets back to about uh, the 17, gain of about seven. Well, he took advantage of a little bit of over-pursuit there, which I think could happen tonight. If he can uh, afford to be able to cut back against the grain, and the way the conditions are with the ground, uh, maybe he'll have a little success cutting back and, and maybe they're losing a little bit of footing. Uh, a good seven-yard gain, though. It's a, a good positive gain in our favor. We need to look for anything positive at this moment to get the ball rolling. Reigns and Houston in the backfield. Big play right here, Jeff. Third down and nine. I got a feel we're going to have a lot of these all night. Jackson in motion. Sarton back to pass. Good blocking. Throws. He's hit as he throws. Go! Caught. Caught for a big play at 40 to the 50. He breaks a tackle at the 30. He's caught, thrown down at the 15-yard line. Well, Dan, the first big play of the night goes to our, well, I should say the first big play. The first big play for Schulenberg is a huge one. Gives us a great gain. Out Where were we at before? About the 17-yard line? You're looking at a what? How many yards we got here? Well, they're going to mark it at about the 16-yard line. 66-yard gain on a nice pass. I almost thought that was intercepted. And almost a good defensive play by the defensive back to get up there and almost tip it away. Amazing catch. Uh, can't ask for anything better. And a good throw by Sarton, who took a pretty good lick right when he released the ball. First and 10 from the 16. Shiner sure. jumps off, uh, off sides, and the play will come back. Houston is uh, tackled in the backfield, but we're going to have the play come back. It looks like unless they had a hard count, and they picked up a snap count from Steven, but it uh, looks like they're off sides. Getting back to that play earlier, the big gainer that Steven Adams caught, just a tremendous uh, catch, as you said, the uh, defensive back. Uh, there's got the signal from the referees, offsides against Shiner, so it's going to mark it off. Getting back to that long pass play earlier, the defensive back, as you said, looked like he had a beat on the ball, but just went right through. He was in excellent position for that play there, just an unfortunate break on his part, and very fortunate for us, turned into an excellent gainer. We need to take advantage of get some type, so, sort of points out of this here. And uh, if we can get a good early start on these fellows, it, it could be a long night for Shiner. Tell you what, was that, uh, was that, oh, uh, Adams. was that Lyndon Lee who ran Adams down from behind? Yes, it was. Well, he showed some pretty good speed. Exactly there. what we've talked about all along. A lot of speed that young man has. Steven Sarton brings his team to the line of scrimmage. He likes this situation where it's first and five from the 10 yard line. A lot of things can uh, can be done with a first and five, and one of those is score a touchdown, Down which, to is the one almost, or two. which is almost what uh, Jason Houston did. He got right to about the one-yard line. Well, uh, big plays or not, we got to take what we can get here and, and punch this in. we got a first and goal here. Got to take care of the ball here. we got a uh, – Shiner's excellently very quick on the line, and they're liable to shoot a gap and, and pick off one of our handoffs, safe plays up the middle, and use our, our, our size with our line and, and, and hopefully just push them through. Number 52, the center, Dustin Bozel, over the ball. Here's Sarton barking the signals. First and goal from about the one. Hand off to Houston. He is not in there. Oh, he's just short. Close, but uh, but not enough. And it'll bring up a second and goal. I like that co the call, a good safe play in the middle. Uh, when the ball gets snapped here, it possibly could have a little wetness from the ground, and there's always a chance of a bad pitch, as we saw on this end of the field. And uh, a good safe play up the middle and just try to grind it out. Clock runs, 5.57 to go in the opening quarter. Schulenberg against Shiner. Dan Miller along with Jeff Brosky. Hope you're enjoying this re-cable cast of the Schulenberg Shorthorn game. Here's in. the handoff to Houston. He's in. That's it. Six-nothing. Schulenberg goes ahead. Jason Houston takes the one-yard run in, and the horns go up on the Shiner Comanches with 5.46 to go in the first quarter, six to nothing. Barry Shepard to attempt the extra point for the Shorthorns. Steven Sarton to hold. Number 68, Don uh, Donovan Kujay will snap the ball. And, of course, the Horns line up in that familiar swinging gate, and they've used that for a number of years. As long as I've been here, too, I use the same thing when I played on that line. Kujay with the snap. Sarton, good hold. Kick is up. Looks good. It is good. Our score, Schulenberg 7 and Shiner nothing with 5.46 to go in the first quarter. We have Baumgart Matula, Bruce and Cindy Bozel, 3D Belt Company, Steve and Sharice Deese, backing the Lady Horns and Shorthorns. Charles and Gail Bow, Oak Ridge Smokehouse Restaurant, 
Robert, Pam, and Narissa Bezetny, Tom and Dolores Sanders, Gallup Supermarket, Leo Stop and Shop, Leo Share Genius, and upstairs at the downstairs, the record rack, who's, who told you if you need to recopy this tape or anything, come by and see him after the game. Uh, Barry and Melissa Shepard, Carrie and Laurie Bauer, Jean, Barbara, and Christine Ginnett, Royce, and Jeanette Cujo. We thank you very much. Jared Schrommick to kick off for the Schulenberg Shorthorns who lead in the ball game 7 to nothing with 5.46 to go in the first quarter. Schulenberg, uh, the one big play was the Sarton to Stephen Adams pass that carried, uh, covered 66 yards, and then Houston took it in on a one-yard run three plays later. Here's a short kickoff by Schrommick. The uh, Comanches get the ball to about the 40-yard line before he is finally brought down by a host of Schulenberg Shorthorns, so Shiner will oh. set up shop first and 10 from their own 40. Looks like we have a legal procedure on Schulenberg. Uh, I don't know, Shiner's declining. They're going to take it where it's at. Pretty good field position on the 40. We talked about the uh, success of the Schulenberg Shorthorn pro program. Shiner over the years also a successful program over for many years under the direction of Billy Turk. Uh, a fine program. A, a perennial playoff power every year, basically. And uh, it's sad to say that this district's going to have to have somebody sit home this year with three fine teams ranked in the state. Uh, somebody's going to be a little upset, but that's, that's, that's the way it goes. Yeah, three very strong teams. We're talking, of course, of Schulenberg and Shiner, the two teams here tonight, and then, of course, East Bernard, who defeated Shiner last week. Shiner set to go first and 10 from their own 40. Ventura, the quarterback. Broken play there. I believe a broken play, but he, he got about six yards. He got a good it. gain out of it. Uh, Schulenberg wasn't expecting that. The backs went to the right, and the quarterback went to the left for the dive. It looked like the option beginning. But uh, a, a good positive game for Shiner, five or six yards. Uh, six, five yards, it looks like about the uh, equal distance there. So uh, positive game nonetheless, something to build on. Clock shows 5-10 to go and runs here in the first quarter, 7 to nothing. Schulenberg leading Shiner with the ball at their own 46-yard line. Split receivers to the right, one wide receiver to the left. Well, here's uh, Ventura, the quarterback, with a keeper over the left side. Very close to a first down. Gets about to the 49. It'll bring up a third and one. We've noticed before and, and seeing them play before that their line doesn't look like it's set. The, the rule states you have to be set a full count before the snap is taken. Shiner isn't set, and it, it's never been called. I don't know if it's been brought to their attention, but we've noticed it before, and I'm sure that the referee on this end is getting an earful from Coach Hoosman. But uh, another good carry. Quarterback's going to – if you remember – if you, back to when Shiner played in the playoffs for years, he scampered for a quarterback sneak touchdown, 50-something yards or so on. A fine play. Third and one. Big play. Oh, Lindy big Lee hit. Did not big get anywhere. See if, was it 51 or 6? I guess it was 51 uh, Hernandez and 61 Ginter. It was a bad spot there. We're uh, complaining here. It looks, I don't know if they're going to punt, go for the punt. They might be going for this uh, fourth. I don't know if you want to give Schulenberg that uh, good a field position, but uh, it's fourth and one, a good spot. <laughs> if you're Shiner's case, they're a good spot on the, on the ball. Ricky Hernandez really shot through there. Ricky's a 5'9", 170-pound senior. They are going to punt the ball. Don't be too sure, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too... No, oh, he's going away. Okay. Cowan punts good a high, punt. Get out short, of the short punt. There you go. Ball is That's high and rolls to about the 21-yard line, and... I don't know if you saw that right there, but uh, Adam Bozel was going downfield. The ball was short, and uh, someone hollered at him, and he cut right toward the sidelines. He had no idea where the ball was, and that was a good move to get out of the way. Good presence of mind out there. Adam's a, a, a smart young man out there, uh, an excellent hitter, as Weimer, some of the Weimer players can test him over the last week. But a uh, fine play by him could have been a big turnover if, if he'd possibly gotten away the ball there. Ball is spotted at the 21-yard line, so Schulenberg will set up shop first and 10 from there. Jamie Jackson comes wide to the right side. Stephen Adams, or I should say Jackson, is wide to the left. Stephen Adams is wide right. Houston and uh, right. Uh, right in the backfield. Right. Nice carry again, Dan. The line's giving him some big holes. Pretty good hole. In fact, that's one of the better ones we've seen right there tonight. Well, Shiner, like we've talked about, has excellent pursuit and excellent quickness on that line. If we can get a running game going, that's going to be a huge plus in our favor. And that's the first time Wright's care of the ball, so possibly they've been keying on Houston. Oh, that's definitely going to happen. You've got a blue chip back like that. Uh, boy, what would be the odds? Of, I'd love to see a Lyndon Lee, Jason Houston backfield. Kurt Bozetsny is wide to the right side. Marek is tight left. Jackson in the slot on the right. 
right and Houston in the backfield. Hand off to Houston. He breaks it up the middle. He could go. He's to the 50, to the 40, to the 30. Tries to get away. Does get away. Now he's finally caught at about the 14-yard line. What a run. Well, the line has taken care of their business, Dan. That's like we talked about. We got a lot of size on that line and, and a lot of experience, should I say. That people don't look back at all the playoff games we played in the past years. These guys got a lot of experience in practice and getting to mop up some of those playoff games when we were lucky enough to be a far enough ahead. It's showing now and a lot, a lot of experience there. Yeah, that's, that's a, a, an excellent point. All those years, uh, the, the, as you said, we were in the, going to the state game in the semifinals. When we get way ahead, we were able to bring in uh, the Kurt Bazette's knees and the Steven Sardins when they were freshmen. You're so right. Well, uh, it, it, it's paid off instead of a 10-week season like most people have. We get a full 16 weeks. That's a lot of years, and when it adds up at the end. Jackson in motion on the, to the right. Hand off to right. Got some running room. Breaks it across the 10 to about the 9. Pickup of about 3 on the play. We'll call it 2nd and 7. What I like to see about when Emily, he's running the ball, he sure is covering it up. He had a, a little bit of problem earlier in the season with some fumbles. And uh, at this part of the field down here, we can't afford any mistakes. And he's covering that ball up and, and getting positive yards and holding on to the ball. Bradley Wright is a 5'6", 165-pound junior for the Horns. He lines up in the backfield next to Jason Houston. Jackson in a slot to the right. Adams in a split out wide to the right. Marek is tight left. Here's handoff to Houston over the right side. Gets to about the six-yard line, I believe. A good tackle by the Shiner man to recover on that. Looked like there was a hole there. Got him by the foot and made a good tackle. There was a hole there, a nice little hole for Jason. Just a shade slow on that, possibly, and attribute that to the quickness of the Shiner line. We hope you're enjoying this uh, our cable cast over Channel 16. This is Dan Miller along with Jeff Prosky. Good to have you tuned in as the Schulenberg Shorthorns look pretty crisp tonight, Jeff. Well, the first series, we were a little tentative out there. I'm sure we're both teams uh, feeling each other out, if, if the word you want to use that word. But uh, looks like we're back to ourselves. Hope we can keep this up. Sarton barks the signals, third and six. Oh, he gets away. Uh, he eludes one man who came in for the sack and was able to get rid of the ball incomplete. Shiner had a good defensive call with a the blitz there. Uh, just a good call. Good, good play by Shiner to disrupt the pass. Hopefully we can get some points here with Barry's foot and, 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 and put a 1-0 on that board instead of that 7. We were talking earlier about young people coming up in the program. You and I were talking before the ball game. Uh, Shepard was kicking when he was a freshman. Oh, yeah. He went to some schools at Rice University and so on and, and took some classes on this kicking game and so on. And he's done a fine job for four years. Uh, I, I, I'd like to find out his total point total for those four years. I'm sure it's real nice. Here's the kick. It looks good. It is nice. good. A lot of room on that one. 25-yard field goal is good, and the Schulenberg Shorthorns go up 10 to nothing with a minute, two seconds to go in the first quarter. Of our fine sponsor, we have Casper's Department Store, clothing and shoes for the whole family, Frank Supply, Swanky Baumgarten Funeral Home, Mark, Brian, and Bill Clazel, Schulenberg Glass, Mike and Phyllis Uritza, Schuyler Engineering, Welburn Petroleum, Hill Bank and Trust, serving your local area for 100 years. Schulenberg to kick off, Jared Schrommick to kick off for the Horns as they lead 10 to nothing with a minute two to go in the first quarter. Schulenberg looking pretty crisp against, uh, against a good Shiner ball club. Short kick comes to about the 40-yard line. Oh, what a stick there. Let's see if we can find the Shorthorn who laid the pads to, to the runner. I, I think it was number 80 for the Horns. Uh, Brad Maycheck. He's been a pleasant surprise on special teams. He's laid some, some hits. Last week in Weimar, he stood up Edmund Irving, which is, if not one of the top kick, off, kick returners in the area, really put him on a piece of there. And, uh, he's been a real pleasant surprise for us. Shiner will start off from their own 40-yard line with 56 seconds to go in the first quarter. They trail in the ball game, 10 to nothing. Randy Ventura, the quarterback for the Comanches, hand off to Lyndon Lee, gets to about the 44-yard line. We can keep him to those two, three yards, carry Dan, and we'll have a successful night. We can't let him get the big run. When he's gone, there's nobody going to catch him. We've seen that in a few of the other games. Yeah, we also saw it earlier that we're talking about his speed now. We saw that earlier when he caught Stephen Adams uh, and that long pass. He really ran him down. We're talking of Lyndon Lee, a, a man uh, who is just a tremendous athlete. Shiner sending one receiver wide right and also sending Russell Bedeker wide left. Ventura barks the signals. Here's Lyndon Lee. He goes nowhere. Oh, let's see who we can get on. Chad Gentert. Um, also credit number 60, Paco Valenzuela. There's, there's, there's been a lot, of, not a, a lot of a running room in the middle there, Dan. Uh, I think they're going to have to go outside, and with the field conditions the way they are, that might be tough. 
It's going to be a big keep. If we can keep that inside plugged up and make them run outside, it could be a, a, a tough, tough night for China. That's the quarter, sir. That's the end of the first quarter. Our score, Schulenberg 10 and Shiner nothing. Some more of our fine sponsors, Watslavic Clinic and Pharmacy, Mr. B Fireworks, Tom Bargus, more bang for your bucks, Hollis Duncan Insurance Agency, Hugo Hollis, Schulenberg, Carl Duncan and Weimer, Frank's Restaurant, Management and Personnel, 65 years Superior Food, IH10 and Highway 77. Third and four for Shiner. Back to pass, Ventura picked, picked off. off by Sarton. He read it all the way. Got one man to beat. He beats him. Gentert lays a good block. Sarton yes. is going to score. Yes. What a great run back by the senior, Steven Sarton. Well, we haven't had to use him at safety this much, Dan, but when he's been in there, he's been a force to be reckoned with. In the Wheatley game, made an excellent play back in the defensive backfield to throw it one of their drives right before halftime where they could have went up with two touchdowns. Big play. If we can get Shiner down early, it could be tough. Well, there's, there's an example of a quarterback reading a fellow quarterback's eyes. He, he read that play all the way and, and just stepped right in. Well, Dan, he's been a safety before he was a quarterback. He played safety his sophomore year starting, and uh, he's just a natural nose for the ball, a, a very intelligent fellow, a natural for the position. Uh, uh, Bozel to snap, or will it be Kuje snapping? I guess it will be Kuje snapping, and uh, Sarton to hold, Shepard's kick. Got it is in. Is good. Got it in. Wasn't pretty damn, but it's still a point on the board. 17 to nothing with 11.47 to go.